pleasure to introduce Kathleen Norris. Thank you, Charles. Um, I see Madisonville. Uh, I see Walnut Hills. Westwood? Anybody here from Westwood? Um, anybody here from College Hill? Okay. Madisonville and Walnut Hills to the front of the class. Um, retail follows rooftops is the conventional wisdom in the real, retail real estate industry. It is the conventional wisdom amongst developers. I can't build retail unless I have a level of density that will support that retail. And of course that varies by the user. If you're a target, um, you need a very much higher level of density than you need if you're the gap. But all of those retailers have very sophisticated models that they refer to and refine regularly to determine store location. And those models are what have driven, those models are one of the factors that have driven the development of shopping malls and shopping malls that have gotten larger and larger. Kenwood Town Center is placed in a good location in the middle of various affluent neighborhoods with excellent highway access and can support its development as a destination retail center. Retail follows, follows rooftops as conventional wisdom is also what hurts neighborhood business districts because retailers say, small and large retailers say, I don't have enough customers. And any retailer who doesn't have enough customers can't stay in business. So as we talk about how to revitalize your neighborhood business districts, we, just as much as Target and The Gap, have to look at whether there are enough customers. And we're going to use an adjusted definition of enough in Walnut Hills or Madisonville or College Hill or Westwood, but there have to be enough customers. And there are many ways to approach that problem. When we started the retail district in Over the Rhine, which many of you know I worked on, we said at the time, this is not going to be a neighborhood serving retail district. It can't survive as a neighborhood serving retail district. We're going to make a destination retail district. We intended to draw customers from all over the region. And I actually remember saying, somebody said to me when we started that retail district, you are out of your mind. Nobody is ever going to go to over the run. They are, that is just never going to happen. And I said, well, you're wrong, but you're right, but you're wrong. We are a region of two and a half million people. And of those two and a half million people, 70% are never going to go over the Rhine. It doesn't suit their interests. It doesn't suit their lifestyle. It doesn't suit their habits. It, doesn't, it isn't perceived as close. In their minds, there's no reason or need to go there. 70% of them are never going to go there. And that, by the way, I believe to still be true. But with the remaining 30%, which is three quarters of a million people who can do a little business. So it really matters who's going to come to your retail district, who could come to your retail district, who would come to your retail district, and who might come to your retail district. Because that is the fundamental on which the retail district is built. And if you listen to Ed Starkey speak yesterday about e economics, you will recall him saying that Cincinnati has lost 41% of its population since 1960. And that is the fundamental problem with your retail districts. 41% of your people went away. Yes, regional malls haven't helped. Yes, there are habit patterns which have been destructive. But 41% of your population went away. There just aren't enough shoppers there. So what are we going to do about it? 